I know I've been on a Divorce Diaries rant for quite a while now, but I just want to take a break to just remind you about this podcast and how I record it. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast everywhere. Seriously. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that's anchor.fm to get started or download the Anchor app. Welcome to the Divorce Diaries podcast. One man's anonymous and live account of if he should get a divorce or stay married. He's been cheated on and he's cheated. Protecting the innocent with changed voice patterns, the omission of names, ages and genders. His authentic journey and account of the daily events of his marriage are helping him sort out his feelings and not get lost in the ups or the downs. New episodes are released daily. Welcome to the Divorce Diaries podcast. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else at Divorce Diaries podcast Patreon page. Link in description. Now for today's episode. I'm out for a walk and um, today was actually not a bad day. Um, today's Sunday and the weekend was managed well, I think. Um, aside from the meltdown Saturday that I told you guys about. Um, <clears throat> today was an okay day, um, but there was a lot of management on my side of just just managing the way communication went. Um, I can say it was better because it wasn't an eggshell kind of day. I wasn't walking on eggshells all day, but I was guarding my speech. She didn't have a lot to say. We kept it either on the surface or about other people and other things. With that said, if, if, if that's the existence, um, I think that is most marriages. And I say most because what's, what's the stat? Most marriages, uh, over 50% of marriages in a divorce. So of the remaining, let's say 48%, let's just call it that, of marriages, um, how many of the 48% are happy? Uh, what does happy mean? I don't really know what happy means, but um, I know what we'd like it to mean. And I think what we'd like a happy marriage to be is one where you're sort of looking forward to seeing each other. Maybe you're working really hard separately. When you have a break in life, get off from work, you're just thinking about, hey, I know my number one person, that, I, that my number one companion, I'm looking to spend time with them. I'm looking to call them and see what they want for dinner, see if they've already picked it up, see if I, I know what they're doing with the kids and I want to come help relieve them so that we can get that other second job out of the way, raising the kids, raising the family, um, taking care of the dog, whatever you got going on. And then we can spend the remaining hours, um, maybe it's only two, from seven to nine with each other doing something watching some real housewives, working on a business, um, trying to make ourselves better in some way, you know, that could actually be a thing. And that, I will call that a happy marriage. And I don't know how many people actually have a happy marriage as opposed to an existence where there's just two people with a salary living in the same place, just doing a long-term roommate thing, thing with a little bit of fucking. So with that said, uh, that's my marriage. And, uh, but except I pay for everything. So it's kind of like, what, what the hell's the point? Um, it's, it's not this, this thing. I, I haven't given up on life in any way. I'm, I'm fairly ambitious. I have goals that I set for myself and the person that I'm with can either help me with those, or I can help them with theirs, or they're going to just slow me down. And if I'm a bad husband, I'll just slow them down. So just not being on the same page really sucks. That was today. It was all right, but you know, I don't think that's good enough, and I wouldn't call that necessarily being happy. And um, I guess if I were to ask lots of people, are they happy in their marriage? I don't know what they'd say. But what I feel would be true, based on all the people that I've talked to, TV shows that I've watched, and not TV shows, I mean, you know, talk shows or therapy sessions or whatever people are recording, things like that. It's like most people just flat out are not quote unquote 
happy, or at least we've calibrated happiness wrong in a marriage. And uh, if happiness means uh, lukewarm overall, then probably most marriages are pretty lukewarm and therefore happy. Mine isn't happy. So why stay married if I want to be happy? I will let you guys know about that business that I started with my wife after she cheated. I really thought that if we tried to accomplish something that we'd either set out to do before in the past and never did, and maybe that led to the disconnects, the the lack of a constituted direction in one way that maybe those things that happened that led to the problems in the marriage and the divorce we were just on two separate train tracks for too long so my thinking I guess was in a way if we can come together to build this business that will that will bridge whatever gap there might be as far as cohesion is concerned with us as a husband and wife that's what I thought that's what I hoped and we start this business and um, and I mean I did it official I mean I filed um, you know with the state and blah 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 and we start making purchases and, and I'm and I'm financing the whole thing because it's, it's not like oh just because we decided to start this business that she's somehow going to contribute any more um, than uh, any more financially than she had to anything else in the past. It's just that that wasn't a requirement. I didn't set that as a requirement where you're going to help me do this financially. You're going to pay this much. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to. Th- th- that was never any rules or parameters that were set with us. It was just always me doing something. Oh, we had a child. Okay, I will pay for things for that child. Oh, we, I want to make us a family. So I'm going to marry you and uh, we need a place to live. I'm going to buy a house. We need car oh i'm gonna buy a car it's just like i always did things like that and at that time i did that exact thing that way also so we start this business and i figured also um maybe foolishly i don't know but i figured also that starting this business there are things that the business needs that are not monetary so I will pay for all of the advertising expenses and whatever else that we have for the business. I will handle that. I'll handle all of it. And you can handle this. This business had an aspect of creativity um, that needs to be done. This, the creative side of this business um, did require a little bit of drawing and a little bit of design, things like that. And Um, My wife made what I felt were, you know, pretty designs, attractive designs. So um, without giving away too much information, too many breadcrumbs for you guys, that part of the business, the creative side would be something that I felt I would maybe advise on more so um, as I had a couple other tried and failed business ventures. So it's not like I'm I'm not a business guru. I was not at that time. And um, she just could definitely take that part on and I could take because I had the lion's share of oh I I think I know how to do basic accounting I think I know how to manage the budget and the ledger I had been doing it in our family and stuff so I figured that the money stuff I could handle the business side of things I can handle the advertising I can handle the marketing I can handle you can create the creative but I didn't stay fully out of that process because I had creative ideas for the business also and I'm like hey we should probably use this design in this way. Or how about some version of this design? Is this okay? Do you think that you could maybe design something somewhat like that or whatever? It was, yeah, it would have taken some ironing out and, and some parameters and things like that. But yeah, that that's what it basically would have been. If you divvy up a startup like that, and there's two people, one is you know, back of house, so to speak, like if it's a restaurant, one's the back of house, which means they're taking care of the kitchen and one's front of house, which means they're taking care of the customers. Um, there may be some other things that you got to split up, you know, administrative things. Oh, we do accounting every week. Uh, we do whatever. But if it's just a two man shop, one's got back of house, one's got front for us. One had the business side, one had the creative. If I stop supplying the money to market the business, it doesn't matter the creative that my wife created it would just the business would flounder and fail 
And if she stopped the creative, the business would flounder and fail because I would have nothing to market. Ultimately, that's what ended up happening because we had so many problems from that affair and the water was so polluted. And I do think we both tried, um, but ultimately she ended up um, backing off and not um, doing the design anymore, the designing. She angrily made a purchase to help. Like, I, I don't know if it was an iPad or something she bought. Um, but she, she was just so upset because she wanted to make a pivot and like go to school and, and, and do something else. And it was just a hard pivot. And just like when she cheated, just like she didn't, not that you're supposed to go around telling, her, telling your spouse, like, Hey, you know, there's someone at work. I'm thinking of going out with this guy. I mean, I know you may not like it, but I'm just saying it's something that I'm toying around with the whole, you know, I'm not really happy with you. And then this other person, I mean, they're pretty sweet at the, at the water cooler. And I just figure, you know, if he's like this at the water cooler, I should probably fuck him. Right. You know, that doesn't happen. So I'm not saying that, oh, you should have cheated differently. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the flagrant nature that I told you guys about before in the past podcast, the flagrant nature that she cheated with and the lack of care. She quit the business the same way and just yanked the rug out from underneath of me, just like she did with the affair. So now, thanks to that failed business, thanks to me knowing how she handles the handled the affair and all of her finances and the lack of self-control and the lack of um, being able to delay gratification and spending and credit, it is just... This marriage is a legal contract. Let's call it a binding business agreement. I am in the business of taking care of her. She is in the business of taking from me. She is, this is an employee, in a way, it's an employee-employer relationship, and the employee is disgruntled. The employer is still paying the employee, but the employee kind of sleeps in the break room, sometimes covers their stuff, in fact, the employer has to go out and hire other people to do other things that the employee won't do. So there's a, a few other contractors that come in to do other things. The employer is that much more stressed, but the employer still sees potential in the employee. The employee resents the employer constantly coming to them and say, hey, you know, you said you want to work out today. Like, I just want to help you. You want to go to the gym with me? Uh, no, I'm tired. Or, okay, well, I mean, well, I mean, maybe you could get out and walk around the neighborhood. It was just, geez, get off my back. And it's like, oh, okay, well, oh, I, I had a good day last Thursday with the employee. Even though they called out Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I had a good day on Thursday because they kind of fucking came back from vacation on Thursday pretty much and then it was Friday so they were happy so I feel like the two good days that I got out of the employee I'm like wow I can't wait for Monday Sally was great Thursday and Friday I'm thinking she's gonna come back Monday but instead she has she has a lot of parties on the weekend she's enjoying herself she's eating what the hell she wants and then she looked in the mirror on Sunday night it felt sh like shit because she didn't do anything because she everybody's working for the weekend and she had a fucking good time. So now she shit the bed all weekend and just, ugh, I look horrible in this dress. I hate going to work. Why do I have to do this? I was supposed to be an artist. Ugh, 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 all this shit, right? <sighs> it's just exhausting. It is exhausting, and for the most part, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to be that employer that has an employee working for me that isn't working for me. I don't want to feel like I'm an employer. I'm married. I'm married. I'm not supposed to feel like I'm, I'm providing, yes, as a man, but I don't want to feel like I'm being taken from. That's the thing. So... Providing, I could really give a shit. I mean, what does that word really mean? Like, I'm, I'm providing something. I don't know. Well, maybe she's providing comfort and companionship, and I'm providing money and companionship and comfort. I don't know. Whatever that means, but I don't want to feel like 
an employee. I don't want to feel like I'm the arbiter of what's right or what's good. I'm the boundary maker. I'm the one that says, no, you, we don't have the money for that. I don't want to say that. I want you to be an adult that's in control of yourself and you won't cheat. You won't lash out. You won't curse at me. You won't pull the rug out from underneath of me in a business and then just not give a fuck that I spent thousands of dollars. I don't want to be with a person that does that. I hear people tell me it's almost like the Loch Ness fucking monster. People tell me that women like this exist that are patient, that communicate clearly, that have control over their emotions. I haven't met a single fucking one. I've met a couple that seem to be a little better than others, but <laughs> to be honest, I've seen most women when under not immense amounts of stress do the exact same things. I will say the older women that I've met they do seem to be in a way more balanced isn't the word that I want to use. I will say more um, careful might be the best word. Careful, not careful, like cautious. Like, whoa, don't go down that path. No, 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 no. They're just careful. I think there have been a few women that have mostly been older that say, you know, I'm not going to talk to that person that way. Usually it's maybe a woman, maybe 35 or younger, that may still raise her voice when speaking to a man or something. Um, curse a guy out. Fuck you. Kiss my ass, you piece of sh You know, some, something like that. That tends to come with, from what I found, younger women but it definitely is with a lot of older women as well i'm just saying when i found the woman women that seem to speak a little bit more calmly and respectfully just as they like they can have a mature argument like a mature way to argue like it doesn't devolve into some weird immaturity thing i haven't found that in a lot of women regardless of age but um and now the whole thinking and evaluating and judging part like that, I mean, there are men like this too. I mean, there are extreme, there are like lots of immature older men and there are lots of immature older women. It's just, um, I, all, all I can say is uh, when I look through the lens of women being friends and how quickly women go from not knowing each other to sometimes becoming very, very close friends to then devolving and I hate that bitch, it's like, Wow, what sort of judgment and evaluation processes do you go through or go around that just really, I mean, to be honest, just have you fucked up? Like, and it's like, oh, yeah, wow, you were such great friends with her. What happened? Uh, you know, things happen. I mean, uh, she was, uh, she changed or something. And it's just like, wow. And I believe that is why, and I'm using the word believe for a reason. I believe, so I can't prove that it's true, and it's just like, like religion, you know, I believe it, but um, I believe that that happens because sometimes, or most of the time, irrational volatility of women has more of an opportunity to brush against each other, or brush, to, brush against itself, and there's two women, then boom, these things are just, these things are just always going to happen where the women just, wow, she blew up at her and then she blew up at her. And that, that was that. Whereas when men and women get into a opposite gender fight, it's a, uh, she may blow up. He may say a fucked up thing that she feels is fucked up anyway. Like, you know, calm down, like, whoa, chill. Like, hold up, who the fuck are you yelling at? You know, something like that. He may come back at her a little bit with something like that. And that, that's interesting because it's like men and women, we, we sort of fight differently with each other because, I mean, a woman, she kind of knows you can hit the man. And 
there's a really strong chance he's just not going to hit you back. But a man, he'll restrain himself both physically and verbally. It's just, and we don't fight in that same way. You know, it's, it's, I'm speaking to a larger, not problem, because this isn't a problem. This is just something that I think the genders need to understand about each other. It's just a thing. We just, we communicate differently. We speak differently. And now with the, the need for each other being what I feel is absent, that there's an absent need. We do not have a cave anymore where the man stays in the cave. I'm, I'm sorry. The woman stays in the cave. The man leaves the cave to go and hunt and find things and then bring it back to the cave for the woman to do something with. And then the woman has to rely on him. He has to rely on her. Then they have offspring. She takes care of said offspring back in the cave. So the cave needs to be protected. So the man does everything he can to protect the cave and protect the cave while he's not there. And the woman still needs protection, which is sometimes why she might fuck the pool guy. But because he left and he's not there to protect her, but this guy is here and he's whatever. So, we don't need each other. That was a joke, but whatever. We don't need each other like we maybe did back in one time. Pioneer days, let's just call them those. There wasn't a gender need for each other because now our caves, our houses, not built by our husbands, uncles, and brothers, our caves are homes that we buy with money, money that we earn from jobs. Men and women equally can get jobs. So the woman that is a nurse practitioner, she can make 150 K and buy herself a house, a very nice one in almost every part of the country. So with the woman being able to do that, she can have a lock on her door. She doesn't need a man. A man doesn't go out to hunt. He goes out to the supermarket, the Albertsons, the Safeways, the giant food market. That's where the man goes. Oh, wait, the woman can go there, too, to get the eggs. She, she doesn't have to trudge through the snow or the, or just forget the snow. She doesn't have to trudge through the woods and kill an antelope or wildebeest. She doesn't. She doesn't have to do that. She just clicks on a thing that says Blue Apron and she orders her Amazon Fresh and, or a pea pod and she just gets food delivered to the house. Literally, a woman doesn't need a man. She may need a man to eventually have children if that's what she wants to do, but that need isn't there, which is why divorces, to me, I believe, that's why divorces have to be so high. Because what the hell does a woman need with a man? She's like, I don't need you to protect me. I just, I just want to feel good most of the time. And I go on Amazon and I shop for things and I go out to the market and I shop for things. And that's what makes me feel good. Um, that guy at the water cooler, he made me feel good. So I fucked him and this, and then I just, oh, well, I don't like how life's going. I'll cut my hair. And that makes me feel better because I'm empowered now. And it is just, all of these things just happen over and over and over again. The need of a man, it's not that she's looking at him with such reverence. Wow. I respect him so much. He's taking such good care of me. He killed that boar and he brought it back to the house. Wow. I am eating something that he went out and got and killed and he came back. His hand was cut and he said, yeah, the damn boar was ornery this time. What the fuck? She's like, I'm, I'm with fucking He-Man. Who the hell? My husband is a fucking God. There we go. There will be a lot of respect. And she's probably going to treat that man differently because he actually went out and killed the bacon and brought it home so she could fry it up in the pan. That shit's hell. I'm not married to a man, but that shit's fucking attractive to me. And he on the other, he can just come home here, woman. Boom. Here's the, here's the beef. <laughs> Whatever the hell. Here's the beef. And he just gets to watch her sashay over and, oh, this is a big one this time. You done good. And give, just gives him his little pat on the back. You done good, babe. You done good. Pats him on the back. He fucking goes off. Just goes in the other room. And all he smells is bacon cooking. All he smells is bacon. And it may seem chauvinistic. It may seem traditional. And it definitely 
probably is chauvinistic and traditional, um, but not chauvinistic from the man's misogyny side. It's just chauvinistic in that there are roles. And right now, those roles aren't there. So that reverence that the man might even have for his wife, that's kind of gone because she's getting fat watching fucking Netflix. And she called out sick because she has sick leave. There is literally no skin in the game that she has to remember she has. There's nothing. There is no threat to either life, the man or the woman, with starvation, fever, whatever it is, food, clothing, shelter. And, and it, I mean, you've got, you've got a walk-in closet. You've got more clothes than you know what to do with. You could donate two-thirds of your shit and still have more clothes than you need. Hell, you probably have more clothes than you need if you donate two-thirds of your shit. You probably have 20 pairs of shoes. You could go down to six and be just fine. Pair for the gym, pair for casual, and then a little four more to be gussied up. It doesn't take much, but we don't have those limitations. We don't have those fences built anymore in our lives that provide security through your spouse. So, yeah, why the fuck do we need to stay together? Why the fuck do we need to stay faithful, loyal, anything? Why the fuck don't we just do whatever the fuck we want? Wait, I think we kind of are which is why I'm making this fucking podcast that's called Divorce Diaries and I'm doing it anonymously. I'm telling you that I don't want to be married anymore. Most marriages end in divorce. What the fuck are any of us doing? It's got to be something we can get back to if we're still going to unite ourselves legally in marriage with one another. So I'll definitely be honest. It is a bad deal for men to get married And because I think that's changing men to an extent, it's probably a bad deal for women to get married. It's bad in different ways. I think I may want to talk about that in another, in the next podcast. Why, my next diary entry, why is it bad? Let's make a note. Why is marriage a bad deal for men? And why is marriage a bad deal, but not so bad for women? Next episode. I'm on the road to divorce, and this is helping me remember. If I could just get there, how long is this fucking road? How clean can I make it? So I want to be happy, and I don't believe I can be happy and married at the same time, at least not to this woman. Wow, that was the Divorce Diaries podcast. The Daily Saga will continue tomorrow. The full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.